Nika Lohr, and this is Lit Happens, your celebration of the literary arts in Saskatchewan. Today I'm very pleased to welcome our guest, Bill Wazer. Bill, welcome to the show. Great to be here. So Bill, tell me a little bit about yourself first. Well, I, uh, I was with the Department of History at the University for over three decades. Uh, I left two years ago to uh, write and speak full time. And I'm a writer on the side, so that's what I do. I write uh, nonfiction. And you have many, many books. How a many few. Books? Uh, my 15th is being released this week. So what are some of the things you've written about? Uh, I did the uh, Centennial History of the Province in 2005. I wrote about the Ando Ottawa Trek in Regina Riot called All Hell Can't Stop Us. I looked at the Indian role in the Northwest Rebellion of 1885. I looked at uh, internment camps in Western Canada's national parks, so it's a real eclectic mix. And so three decades with the university and a couple of years just On with my the own. writing. That's right. So are yeah. there things that still surprise you about what you're finding about, out about Saskatchewan history? Yes, and also being a writer. I'm, I, I hope I'm becoming a better writer because I'm able to write almost daily now. And in fact, before I left the university, one of the courses I was teaching in my last few years for graduate students was how to write history and other nonfiction. And that was really good for me as a writer, reading about how to write. Yeah. And so have you, uh, did you start writing before you were at the university or when? Take us back to Well, as a, as a graduate student, I had to prepare two large pieces of writing, uh, an MA thesis and a PhD thesis. But at one point, maybe 45 years ago, and I've been around the block a few times, I actually thought of getting into journalism. Um, and then I decided to become an economist. And at the third year as an undergraduate uh, in economics at that time, they lost sight of the people. It got very mathematical, mm -hmm. so I bailed, into, and history was my other major, so I stuck with history. Yeah. And so the people interested you more than That's the That's right. Then. Uh, I think one of the best things going for historians and for writers are stories. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of professional historians don't know how to use stories. And I, I try to use stories, people stories, as springboards into larger themes, issues, or events. So it's a great device. And it's a way of uh, connecting with the reader and, and uh, making, making them, them connect, because we all talk about stories, mm -hmm. whether it be at the bar, over coffee, visiting with family. So uh, as I say, stories are some of the best things going. And uh, I try and go back and look at stories that may have been looked at by other historians and come at them a different way, either because of new sources, mm -hmm new approaches, et cetera. When I did on All Hell Can't Stop is about the Ono Auto Trek and Regina Wright, I used access to information legislation. I was able to look at records that no one had ever looked at before. So I've been very fortunate that way. Well, and, and when you're studying history, the stories, for me, when I studied history, the stories were what helped me to remember what happened. I, I, I don't remember dates True. and figures, True. but I remember the stories. That's right. And uh, stories are not, you know, history is about change over time. And if history was about facts or a form of jeopardy, I wouldn't be in this <laughs> business. And one of the interesting things about history is that there are people coming at it with different approaches, different ideas, and history is constantly being challenged or pushed in different directions. And so that's one of the reasons I delight in doing it, if I can come up with a new interpretation or put a little twist on a story. Not make something up, but uh, look at pre something that was previously neglected. For example, there's a great biography of John and McDonald from the 1950s by uh, Donald Creighton, the Dean of Canadian Historians. But if you go to his index, you won't find the word Indian, Métis, Native, et cetera, et cetera. And yet Johnny MacDonald was our leading Indian Affairs Minister. He served longer than any other uh, politician as Indian Affairs Minister. And yet in the 1950s, Native newcomer relations were not on people's radar. And so your new book does delve into that. Okay? Yes, uh, my new book is a, a kind of a prequel. In 2005, I did the Centennial History of the Province from uh, 1905 forward. And uh, some of the comments I got at the time is that, what about the story before 1905? So I went back and I've looked at that period. I've had other books in between, but that new book is out. It's called A World We Have Lost. It's a deliberate title because I argue that uh, after 1885, 1885 to 1905, it's a new period where there's an emphasis on whiteness, mm -hmm. there's an emphasis on agriculture, uh, there's an emphasis on the southern half of the province. But before 1905, Saskatchewan was a much different place, and it is indeed today a world we have lost. 
And the new book is, is beautiful with many maps and pictures. Um, and yeah, it's, it's big. It's a doorstopper. It's over 700 pages. But I go right back to Kelsey as the first known European to come to Western Canada. And I try and tell the story from the inside. So instead of Kelsey striding larger than life across the pages of Western Canadian history, I, int I introduce Kelsey as an outsider. Mm -hmm. And I mention the fact that he's only able to go inland because he's taken inland and he's accepted. And I try and tell the story from the perspective of the inside. I try and place a great emphasis on Indian and Métis peoples, and the environment is also a character in this story. So that's the way I tell it. So there's that Aboriginal environmental lens of this story. And I think that readers will find uh, much different Saskatchewan than they know today. And so do you find that your readers are purely academic, or do you have a lot of people no, that no. just love stories? No, I don't write for my colleagues. I don't write for six or eight book sales. I write for the general audience, and what delights me more than anything else, if someone emails me, phones me, or stops me on the street and wants to talk about something I've written about, that's who I write for. And if I can get them thinking and talking about Saskatchewan history and putting aside that standard statement, but history is so boring, I've done my job. And it really isn't boring. And, and we think about this province as having uh, a, a very short history. But when you actually oh, look yeah. back and we have Wanuskewin and we have these oh, wonderful yeah. we, resources. We have a very ancient history. And uh, we have sites that rival uh, Stonehenge and age. And it's just that people don't know how to look and they don't know how to read the land. And hopefully a world we have lost will tell them about those stories. Well, I uh, I can't get enough of Saskatchewan history, and so I'm really I'm really pleased to have met you and, and to know that you have all these pieces. So, what are you working on now? What are you doing? Uh, I'm working on Almighty Voice. Almighty Voice was a Willow Cree man. Uh, he in the 1890s was the most wanted criminal in Canada. There was a 19th month manhunt for him. He died at the hands of the Northwest Mounted Mount Police in May 1897. In fact, they blew him up. They brought in cannon and they blew him up and two other companions. I want to tell the story of Almighty Voice, what exactly happened, so I've gone back to documents that people haven't looked at. And then the second half of the book looks at how the Almighty Voice story has been told in movie, poetry, stories, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'm finding that there is the so-called real story of, of Almighty Voice, and then there is the mythical or legendary stories. And sometimes those two lines drawn out to infinity cross and sometimes they diverge quite widely. And so do you, do you like to walk the places as well? Oh yes, I've, uh, I've hooked up with an elder and former chief, One Arrow. Uh, we've been to the site, I've been to the site where One Arrow, uh, oh, pardon me, Almighty, Almighty Voice died. Uh, we've driven those back roads. I've attended uh, ceremonies. In fact, I was a guest at a Sundance a few years ago. So I, uh, I try and go and learn and most importantly listen mm -hmm. because they have things to tell you and things to teach you. Well, Bill, it has been amazing to listen to you today, but we're almost out of time. So can you tell me where you can find your books? Well, the book should be in most bookstores, in particular McNally Robinson, and the book will be launched uh, at Broadway Theatre on Friday, June the 10th at 7 p.m. Guy Vanderhaeg is the guest host. There's a special musical guest, uh, B.D. Willoughby, who does uh, historic songs. He'll be coming up from Regina, and hopefully we'll have a party that evening. Excellent. Well, it's been so nice to have you. Thank you, Bill. This has been Bill Wazer. I'm Danica Lohr. This is Lit Happens. You can find past episodes on Shaw TV Saskatoon on YouTube. Thank you for watching. <laughs>